get started? All right. Sounds good. Well, hello and welcome everyone to SNHU's Career Day 2024, our free virtual conference open to students, alumni, faculty, and staff from anywhere around the globe. We are thrilled to have such a, day, a diverse audience with us today. I'm Jill G. Bruno peterson I'll be your host for this session, and I'm also joined by Colleen McBride, who will be posting links and other information in the chat box during this presentation. I want to ensure that your experience is as smooth and enriching as possible, so let's start with some announcements. Before we dive into the exciting content lined up for you today, please take a moment to familiarize yourself with our virtual conference platform, Teams. You'll find features like live captioning, various written language options for the slides, the ability to move through slides at your own pace, should you wish, and the chat box, which you can open by selecting the chat icon at the top of your screen. In the chat box, we've included instructions for using the Teams features mentioned. This session will feature a 30 minute presentation followed by a 15 minute question and answer portion at the end. You may notice that cameras and microphones have been disabled so everyone can focus on the presenters, but we encourage you to actively participate throughout the session. Use the chat to submit your questions for the Q&A at the end and don't miss the opportunity to network with fellow attendees. Your engagement is what makes Career Day dynamic and the value of the connections you can make cannot be understated cannot be overstated. One great way to do this is by sharing your first name, career area of interest, the area that you live in, and your LinkedIn profile to connect with others. If you haven't already, please make sure to check out the Career Day agenda for other sessions that may be of interest to you throughout the day. We have a fantastic lineup of sessions, and the virtual format allows you to join and leave sessions at your convenience throughout the day. The sessions will also be recorded, and you'll have access to them post-conference on YouTube. When the recordings are ready, links will be sent to you via email. So if you miss something or if you want to revisit a session, you can do so at your own pace. Due to the sessions being recorded, cameras and microphones have been disabled for the presentation. Let's create a respectful and inclusive space for everyone. I trust that each of you will contribute to maintaining a positive environment throughout the session. Please be mindful of your language and interactions. Do not share any offensive or highly personal content and do not photograph, screenshot, or take personal recordings. If you encounter any technical issues or if you need support during the conference, don't hesitate to reach out to the IT service desk. At SNHU, creating an inclusive and accessible learning environment is a priority. Your experience is crucial, and if you require accommodations, please reach out to the respective centers. For online students, you can email oac at snhu.edu or call them at 866-305-9430. For campus students, you can email cac at snhu.edu or you can call them at 603-644. 3118. And for SNHU staff and faculty, you can email hr at snhu.edu. With that, we've covered the essentials for a smooth and engaging conference experience. Now let's briefly learn a bit more about our presenters before we get started. Jason Whitney is a campus career advisor who believes in the power of design thinking, asking questions, the healing properties of bacon guitar solos, and involving people in your professional goals. He's been working in campus-based career services since 2005, helping connect students and employers. He is so excited to be talking with you today with his friend and colleague, Jessica Erb. Jessica Erb is an online career advisor with over two decades of higher education experience, nine dedicated to guiding students in their career journeys passionate about empowering students to discover the strengths and building confidence, Jessica, along with her partner, Jason Whitney, is thrilled to host today's engaging session on design, on using design thinking to design a fulfilling career. So without further ado, I'll pass the virtual microphone over to Jessica and Jason. Take it away. Thank you, Jill. Well, welcome everyone to our session. As Jill said in our intro, Jason and I are both very excited to present on today's topic. 
Before we dive into our agenda and our content today, oh, we would love to ask a prompt from everyone to put something in the chat. One of the things that we notice as we work with students, whether you're online or on campus, is that you might be starting a brand new career, you might be a career changer looking to change your career, or you might be looking to advance your career um, and maybe moving up. So we'd love to hear from you in the chat box. If you don't mind putting in there, let us know, are you new to your career? Are you looking to change your career? Or are you looking to advance your career? It'll give us an idea to see where everyone's at. Changing career, advancing career. Looking to change, yeah. Seeing a lot of changing careers. Completely, Completely new is all good, Emily. Excellent. Yes, I love it. Retiring from the military and changing career. That's amazing. Thank you for your service. Awesome. Perfect. So thank you so much for sharing. As you can see, if you are um, changing career, new career, or looking to advance, you're not the only one. There's going to be others in this group who are in the same um, path as you. So let's go over a little bit about what we're going to cover today in our session. So Jason and I are going to introduce what is design thinking, because maybe you've never heard of it. And then we're going to break down the methodology for design thinking and giving you some really um, easy steps in thinking about how you can apply this. Um, and then we're going to connect the dots, which is you know what we call meaning making and really helping you to see how it all comes together. So that way you're designing a life that is meaningful to you. And then we're going to break down some very easy strategies based on those different careers. So if you're looking to start a new career, change career, or advance, we're going to give you some very specific tailored advice to help you um, to move forward in that. And then we'll end with an interactive activity and really applying some of those easy steps that we discussed. All right, folks, uh, I want to echo my colleague and friend Jessica's welcome. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your day. Uh, we understand everyone's very busy and has stuff to do. Uh, so we hope that this presentation uh, will be informative and also something very useful that you can actually apply to your search. Uh, so you can see on the screen in front of you, there are different ways of thinking that you can use to approach your career planning and whatever your next goal is. But the cool thing about design thinking ultimately is that no matter where you are in your career, if you are just starting out, uh, if you're looking to change, if you're looking to advance, like design thinking and its principles are adaptable and can help anybody no matter where you are in your search. So let's just establish that as a, a ground rule. So one of the cool things um, about kind of the different thinking and approach for design thinking, Dave Evans is one of the authors of the Designing Your Life book uh, that Jessica and I have been using with students for years. So the issue, according to Dave, is that if you're trying to figure out the perfect strategy to plan your career goals or next job and mistakenly, that mistakenly assumes that that challenge or that problem is what's called a team problem that can be solved uh, when in fact your life and your job search is actually a wicked problem that needs to be designed. So one of the things about design thinking um, is a, a different, it's a different approach from anything else related to engineering, business or research. So what they say about a team problem, the engineer folks and the business folks, um, that's like a well-bounded problem, a uh, well-behaved problem. Uh, it may be hard, but once you figure out the solution to that particular problem, you can use the same solution over and over and over again, and it fits, it still works. Uh, but as all of you know, um, you are in school, you're pursuing uh, you know, either kind of a new degree or an advanced degree, um, and life happens. <laughs> and uh, life is way more complex uh, and unpredictable and less well behaved than kind of a traditional like design, uh, an engineering type of problem or business problem. So you need design thinking, which is way more adaptable and flexible that could help you with your plans. Um, so that's what's different. We're gonna build your way forward kind of as we talk today, and you're gonna apply principles in the real world to kind of answer some of these questions about your career goals and plans. All right, as you can see on the screen in front of you, we have traditional, thinking kind of factors and criteria that define that type of thinking and then design thinking. I'm not going to read the slide, but um, you can see like the, the primary difference, like traditional thinking, flawless planning, design thinking, enlightened trial and error. So there's an orientation to trying stuff versus like planning and thinking about things. Um, and I know, I don't know if folks have heard the phrase like no plan survives first contact with the reality. That's one of the phrases the authors for design thinking use. So planning is good, but 
trying out stuff and you know trial and error to see if it's a good fit, whether it's a, a new job or a new career, a new industry, design thinking is more adaptable and more appropriate. So um, you know, life happens and you need something that's more flexible. So a quick story about um, when I was in college a million years ago, uh, uh, my plan, my plan, flawless plan, was to teach high school English. Uh, but I had never been in a classroom. I had never been in front of students before uh, until my last year, senior year, uh, in its great wisdom, the State University of New York at Plattsburgh uh, put me in a, in, in a classroom of, uh, had ninth graders and I had 10th graders. So I had only ever really learned about how to teach through books in theory and you know what's good pedagogy and all that stuff, um, but I'd never actually taught. So you can probably <laughs> guess how the experience went. So it didn't go well for me, uh, didn't go well for my students. So thinking about being a high school English teacher and actually being a high school English teacher are two very different things. Um, so I never finished uh, my teaching, I had to, kind of change majors, I had to transfer. Um, so it cost me because all I did was plan and I only had one plan and I never really tested it out. Um, I cost myself more time and money. Uh, so with design thinking, what you do is you're gonna actually be more involved in testing out your career goals and kind of your approach. Uh, so enlightened trial and error is where you get curious about your career goals. You ask good questions, you talk to people, and then the key is to go experience these things, whether it's what we call a prototype conversation, which we'll talk about more, um, or an actual experience, a lived experience where you volunteer in a certain role, or maybe you shadow in a certain role. Again, we'll talk more about these things. So design thinking is much more oriented to doing versus traditional thinking, which is like, oh, I'll think about this, I'll plan for some stuff, and then I'll just go go for it. Um, so design thinking is important because like the reality of what a job is like is not in your head. It's, it's out there. So you have to actually go out and experience it and see if it fits. Uh, so the principles that Jess and I are going to talk about are get curious, talk to people and try stuff. So that's if, if we can sum it up just today, like that's the best thing you could take away from the presentation. Just those phrases, get curious, talk to people, try stuff and then um, Jess and I are going to get into more about the specifics of design thinking in our next slide. Exactly. OK, so let's continue digging a little bit deeper. So Jason had mentioned earlier that a lot of this is rooted from a book called uh, Designing Your Life by Dave Evans and Bill Burnett. And this is a book that we've used in our career course on campus that Jason and I both taught for, for years. and. You know, based on our experience prototyping, if you will, with students, you know, we really wanted to bring forward what we think are going to be the most helpful for, for you today, because we could teach you designing your life in an entire day. So we're getting this in 30 minutes. So we're going to really give you a quick version of this. But at the end, we are going to also provide you some resources and links that can help you explore further and encourage you to meet with your career advisor to continue this exploration. So as you see here, the design thinking methodology includes these six different steps. But what's really important to know about this is that, um, that this is not a linear step path that you need to follow. As Jason mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of design thinking is around flexibility. It's about being able to move and be fluid. And that's the same thing with this. Our lives are not always easy to predict and plan out. So we need that flexibility. So the first, uh, but we're going to break this into each step, but realize that you can always, you know, when you get to prototype, you might find yourself going back to empath empathize and so on and so forth. But explaining what does accept mean? This is where, um, you know, it's really important for you to accept where you're, at, where you're at right now in your career. One of the things I often hear from students is that they feel like this should message. I should have started college earlier. I'm late to the college. I should already know what I want to do. These types of messaging we tell ourselves gives us the wrong impression that we're supposed to have everything figured out. And most of the most you know, successful people in, the, in this world don't have everything figured out. But what I want you to think about is, you know, accepting where you're at and, and understand that all of your previous experiences up to this point have taught you what about yourself, what you like, what you don't like, things like that. So there is no should in, in uh, designing your life. So accepting where you're at right now and then once you accept where you're at right now, you can move forward. 
And then the empathize stage, this is one of my favorite stages um, in design thinking because this is where we have to really get curious um, because this is where you have to get curious about yourself as well as other people's experiences. Now, when you're thinking about yourself, you know, it's important to start with maybe having a better understanding of your strengths, your values, the things that are important to you, your interests. Because as you're starting to explore careers, if you don't have a deep understanding or foundation of yourself, you know, it's really hard to move forward. And so, again, at the end of this, we'll provide you some links um, that you can work on this. But, you know, doing assessments can be a really great tool. If you're struggling in this area, you can meet with your career advisor to explore which uh, assessment might be a best fit for you. Um, but there's even some assessments of just learning your values and aligning those with your work. Um, there's also an assessment that Designing Your Life provides, which is a work view, life view reflection that helps you evaluate what does work mean to you, not just about making money, but when we understand the purpose we find in our work, it helps us to identify what kind of work we're looking for. And then when you're doing your life view reflection, this really helps to put in a lot of your values and your perspectives into, you know, what type of a work environment or type of work you want to see yourself um, exploring. And then also talking to other people about their experiences. We'll talk a little bit um, when we get to prototype where you can talk to people who are doing the career path and which you wanna learn more about. But having that mindset of you know being curious and wanting to show um, you know empathy of, of looking at what their experience looks like and, and learning more about somebody else's you know uh, journey in something is, is a really valuable step. And then defining, this is a stage, it's all about defining what it is that you desire as an outcome uh, in your life or in your career. But it just helps you start writing down what it is that you want to explore. What wicked what problem do you want to solve? Um, or maybe it's just what do you want to explore? It could be as simple as I want to learn more what I can do with my major. Um, I want to learn more about, you know, what it looks like to become an author. I want to learn more about what it looks like to become a game design at a small, you know, company. You know, whatever it is that you're really looking to explore right now. And then as you dig through these steps, that's where you need that flexibility because you might get to prototype and realize, Oh, it's not what I thought it was. I need to maybe explore this a little bit further and then you pivot. And so I think it's important in, in anything is to be flexible and adaptable in this process. Awesome. So again, looking at the part of design thinking methodology that Dish just talked about the first, I guess, half, uh, it is not a linear process. So you can, as you ask questions, you will go back and revisit other steps as you have more questions, more information, you want to explore more stuff. So on the ideate phase, basically you've now talked to people, um, you've asked good questions of yourself, you've done some research maybe, um, you've defined the few things, the challenges that you actually want to explore and work on. So in the ideate phase, what's really critical is that this is where you generate lots of ideas of like how you want to do things, what you want to experience, what you want to learn about. Um, now, important thing about ideate is like a lot of folks i think judge ideas before they even kind of put them out there and one important thing about ideation is like to suspend judgment like if you think you have an idea to like learn about something or get some kind of experience you think it's kind of crazy just put it down like suspend the judgment come up with as many ideas as possible and the other really important thing about the ideate phase and empathize you are you know asking questions and you are talking to people but in the ideate phase I think it's really important to involve other people with your career ideas and goals. Um, and we'll talk more about that um, in the next uh, slide or two. So you get a lot of ideas, brainstorm uh, with people, do some research, and then follow through on, okay, so I've got these ideas to learn about XYZ career goal. Now we're going to shift in, okay, so I've got the ideas. Now we're going to actually bring this stuff to life. We're going to apply it. So the important thing about a prototype is that it should be um, quick, relatively easy, and cheap or cost-free. So the big thing about prototypes is they should be hands-on. Um, so that's whether you're talking to someone uh, in a job of interest, uh, maybe you're shadowing, uh, maybe you have a chance to intern or do like a project through class with an employer in kind of a new uh, industry or new job role. So it's a prototypes are like lived things. They're like actual things you experience and they give you a lot of good information on which to base whatever your next step is. Uh, the cool thing about prototyping is it exposes a lot of assumptions. So if you think and I saw someone uh, was really great, they said they're uh, a graphic design student. So again, if you think 
a certain thing about being a graphic designer and then you go out and have a lived experience, a prototype experience uh, as an intern or you do a class project or you talk to a designer uh, in person, like, oh, that's not what I thought or that I assumed this, but it's really that. So prototyping allows you to take these ideas you've generated and actually test them in reality in the real world. Um, ideally, we say a lot in design thinking and, and just you know, said this to students like fail fast, fail forward and learn from each new prototype experience as you get more information. Uh, and then the, I guess I don't want to call it the last phase, but the kind of the end of the design thinking methodology is the test. So this is also done in conjunction with prototyping where you can kind of go out and have that lived experience and see if what you thought was true and accurate about this job or this career path. And then you have more information to go back to empathize or go back to redefine because you've got some lived experience, good direct firsthand information, and now you can make better decisions about whatever your path is going forward. All right. All right, so we kind of mentioned design thinking, kind of the overall principles. These are some of the mindsets. The two I'm going to focus on are bias toward action um, and radical collaboration. So part of design thinking is like you're you're a designer. You're literally trying to invent and design your future. You, uh, you can't just think about it. Uh, you can't just limit your uh, you know, search for whatever's next to doing research or reading articles online and websites like you need to get out there and talk to people. Absolutely critical. So there's a bias toward action. And this may come as a terrible disappointment. Uh, Jessica and I don't know everything. We don't know about every career job in the world, even though we have a combined 400 eons of career experience. Uh, I've never been. I saw someone earlier in the chat I think they want to get into forensic accounting. I've never been a forensic accountant. I don't know what that's like. You need to go talk to a forensic accountant, like radical collaboration. So like if you want to get into game art, I saw another a student mentioned that that was their major. Well, I've never been a game artist. I never worked on a video game. Go talk to those people. So again, get curious, talk to people, try stuff. So um, you need to get out there and find those folks. Uh, and that's what the radical collaboration one kind of comes in for a mindset. Uh, and I'm a big believer that all of us is smarter than any one of us. So I, again, I can't know everything, just can't know everything. You need to go out and have those prototype conversations and talk to folks that are doing the job you're interested in. Um, it's kind of like having a conversation with yourself in like five years, like that person you're talking to could actually be you in five years. Um, so again, these kinds of conversations, prototype conversations are really important. And if you can get out there and talk to multiple people in a similar job that you're interested in, you'll get some great lived experience, firsthand knowledge, really good insights and guidance. And again, that will make you feel more confident in whatever the next steps you take are. And Jess, I don't mean to say you don't know everything. You probably know, you know more than I do, but let's be honest, like you got to go out and talk to people. There's a couple things I don't know. A <laughs> All right, thank you. So next up, um, really looking at why design thinking. So we've covered a lot about, you know, the methodology, what really goes into designing your life, <clears throat> but there's also a meaning focus of this. When we're designing our life, we want to find purpose in what we're doing. A lot of us are looking for work that is going to energize us, that is going to bring us joy, and that we're going to find purpose. And so a lot of design thinking is really in, um, intended to include a lot of these elements into your job search and career management, because there's not an absence of these things. When we don't include these things in our job search and our career management, then we find ourselves not as happy or are enjoying what we do. So um, when we find, you know, purpose in what we believe and what we do and who you are, that's kind of like that symbiotic relationship that we're really striving for when using designing your life uh, methodologies and steps. All right, so come toward the end of the presentation. So we've kind of said this earlier, but if you remember anything from the presentation, you don't have to go out and buy the book Designing Your Life, uh, but the, the foundational principles are this simple. Get curious, talk to people, try stuff. Um, so again, the most important thing is involving other people in your career goals and plans, like talking to folks, uh, asking good questions. And I think those steps will help set you up for, okay, well, how do I really now learn about 
what it's like to be a forensic accountant, a game artist, um, you know, a graphic designer, whatever it may be that you want to pursue. Then the next level prototype stuff, and Jess and I will kind of talk about this in our next slide. Um, we'll give you some ideas about how to get some of that experience to try things out and see if they're a good fit. Exactly. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, for all, all of our career changers and as well as anyone who's looking to advance in their career and thinking about how you can apply designing your life in your career management. So as Jason said, you know, if there's three things you're going to remember, always remember, get curious, talk to people, try stuff, uh, because it really does boil down to that. And when I'm working with a student um, who's looking to change their career, you know, the first thing I always ask them is, you know, be curious about what the possibilities are going to be, because sometimes we have assumptions about what we want to do. But there's so much more in my experience that when you start exploring careers, you there are career paths you never even knew existed. And oftentimes doing this exploration phase might reveal some really cool career paths you've never even considered. Or even when you start talking to people and they say, well, based on what you're telling me, you might be a fit for this kind of a position. Have you thought about that? And then you might say, I've never heard of it. And I've seen that happen with a lot of students. So having these uh, conversations can really help to unveil um, some of those, those types of roles. Talking to people can also include, you know, not just SNHU alumni, but even your colleagues. If you have coworkers at your current company or friends or connections who are working in a career path that is of interest to you, that you want to change into, ask them to get together for coffee or even just a virtual call or phone call um, so you can ask some questions to learn more about what does their experience look like in that role? How did they get into that career? What skills and certifications or degrees are required to get in? You know, are there any trends in the industry or that position that you should be aware of? You know, um, and see if they have any tips that can help you navigate not only getting into that career, but making sure you're putting your best foot forward. You can also consider using great resources like LinkedIn, also our Asking to Connect. There are lots of asking to students who are doing their studies who may be working in a job that you want to do. So finding any asking to students on Student Connect or LinkedIn is a great way of leaning on each other to be able to uh, meet, network, and share your experiences about your jobs. Um, the other stuff too about trying stuff, you know, when you're doing a career change, it's really important to understand what are the skills required for the job that you're looking to go into. And once you've understand your gaps, that gives you kind of a roadmap of where you want to start. And if you're not sure how to tackle any of those, again, reach out to your career advisor. We can always offer as much help as possible. But even those informational conversations, those prototype conversations with people in the field might offer some really great insight in how to fill those gaps. But there are some resources available to you here through SNU as a student. So if you're not aware, you get access to LinkedIn Learning, which is a really great platform of courses. Um, that can give you soft as well as hard skills, you know, that can prepare you for different career paths. Um, you can also take advantage of exploring projects, micro internships through Forage, where you can gain really great, valuable project experience with an employer. So if you want to go and be a data analyst, go find a data project on Forage where you can gain some of that experience in applying what you're learning in your classes. Um, and then also explore things like professional associations. You know, oftentimes those will provide a lot of great uh, information and resources and how to get your foot in the door. Um, are there any volunteer opportunities? You know, if you're looking to get into, um, you know, working with children in, um, in the nonprofit or being a counselor, are there some volunteer opportunities you can get involved in just to start getting some experience? Um, and so exploring those might be really helpful. Are there certifications that you need to start working on? Um, again, LinkedIn Learning has great resources to help you prepare for certifications but maybe there are some certifications you're just not aware of that you need to explore. So your career advisor, as well as, you know, alumni or people in the field can give you insight into that. And then if, is there an opportunity for you to do some part-time work? This is definitely more of like that testing phase, um, but if there's a part-time um, opportunity for you to try something before you jump in and do a whole degree in it, you know, that could be a really great opportunity for you to prototype and see if it's something that you really want to do. So, for example, if you are looking to change a career into human resources, I would recommend considering, you know, earning your SHRM certification um, and maybe even joining SHRM um, to be able to get their daily um, newsletters, articles. They have great webinars that keep you informed about the latest trends. They have a wonderful monthly um, uh, magazine that you can subscribe to to keep updated. And then you can also find local SHRM chapters, you know, where you can get involved and meet with alumni um, who are in HR, and maybe even meet with HR at your own company and ask them some questions about their career path to see how that might fit for you. 
Now for my career advancers in our room today, as you're looking to advance in your career, you know, when you're thinking about um, getting curious, I think it's really important to remember that you need to remember what are your strengths and skills and accomplishments and impacts that you've had up to this point. Because sometimes um, we might be, you know, nervous about that advancement in our career. And so understanding, you know, the things that you've accomplished and that you're bringing with you um, as a way of talking about your transferable skills that are really going to help leverage, you know, your ability to step into a leadership role are going to be valuable. Um, and so having that curiosity about yourself as well as what does those career paths look like. If you're looking to advance at your own company, you know, um, talk to people who are in those positions and asking them, how did you get, you know, into this position? Who supported you as you were moving up in your career? So that way you can maybe find out some strategies of uh, finding mentors or um, those tips that can help you advancing your own career. The other thing too is, you know, talk to your HR office. You know, um, you know, you could talk to your direct manager about some professional development opportunities to take advantage of, you know, um, learning new skills or some leadership development programs. But even your own talent development office, um, if you have one at your company, you might have some resources available to you that can help you continue to advance your skills and take advantage of some really great training opportunities um, that might even lead to promotional opportunities for you at a company. And then, um, you know, develop a plan for continuous learning and skill development. So, you know, with this, it's thinking about what's the next thing I can work on, you know, what's the you know, the, the gap of what I need to work on and how can I fill that? Again, you know, thinking about how you could fill this with your current role. Are there any projects you could take on? Can you acetate the lead on something? So that way you can really demonstrate your leadership ability. But, you know, if it's not at your own company, you're looking to move up. These are things you can also mirror outside the company by meeting with people who are in leadership roles that you want to do one day and finding more about how they got to where they are and who supported them in their journey and um, and get some tips about how you can you know really prepare yourself for a career such as that. Um, so, yeah. Some great comments uh, in the chat from people responding, Jessica, to your points. Uh, again, just to say, folks, like involve other people in your ideas like you all have a network uh, there are some great people either in your company or people at other companies you have your own family your extended family your friends and who do they know a lot of good people out there and again your career advisors are certainly a good resource uh, and we can help you connect uh, we've also been on linkedin and what do we have now 230,000 snhu alumni on the <laughs> yeah so that's a great resource to access to have mm -hmm. these informational interviews and prototype conversations. Yeah, I know we're starting around 10, but I wanted to give, you know, even a couple examples of what I've seen working with students who have used some of these steps on, um, you know, with career changes or career advancements. You know, I was working with a student this past year who was just getting ready to graduate their psychology degree. And up until that point, they had not worked in what they considered a professional career. They've worked in a lot of blue collar jobs and there was definitely a lot of self-doubt in what they were telling themselves about stepping into a future career, but they knew they wanted to go into graduate school and didn't know what direction to take. And after having a conversation with them, they had lots of ideas that they wanted to explore. So what we did is we really narrowed it down to, you know, what were the most important things that they really wanted to include. And we found an alum who was working in a, a career path um, that, you know, was uh, that aligned with a lot of what they were looking to do. And that informational interview um, really gave them a lot of insight into uh, because that person wanted to go into technology and math and that person gave them a lot of great insight into that type of work and research and work that's being done that helped them to identify doing a, a technology degree um, and gave them that that you know hope and um, motivation to be able to pursue that and then also you know uh, just recently I got a call from a student who was transferred over by their academic advisor who had changed their major several times and up until that point, they have not had a true conversation about taking a pause and accepting where they're at and using the empathize phase to really do some self-assessment. They just felt that they didn't have any direction of where they wanted to go. And so we've been spending time working on their assessments of understanding their strengths, um, their skills, you know, um, but more importantly, taking what they've learned from their previous majors and their work experience as valuable insight to move forward. And that particular student was just felt so relieved to feel that it was okay you know, that they didn't know what they wanted to do. And more importantly, that everything that they've experienced so far um, did have purpose and it wasn't for nothing. Um, and I think that's really important. But just to give you an example of, if you're feeling stuck, think about how designing your life and some of the steps we've discussed can get you unstuck and think about which step might be more helpful to you and where you're at in, in your career.
Okay. So Jason, I wanted to do a quick activity to really give you an example of ideate. So when we teach this in our in-person classes, we do an activity in person where you can get lots of ideas about your career problem or your wicked problem or just your career path you want to explore and uh, and hearing from all of your classmates. So what we love to do is I'm going to read out a student scenario and we're going to tap into all of your expertise and knowledge because I think the important thing to learn here is all of you have something to share with each other. You all have expertise, knowledge, ideas, um, you know, that you can contribute to someone who is feeling stuck. And so um, we'd love to hear what all the things that you are coming up with. And in the chat, I would love for you to include, you know, what are some things that someone could do in this situation to prototype or test out or to even just explore, you know, and see what that looks like. So the student scenario I'm going to provide is we have a student who wants to become a therapist working with children who has no experience in this area yet. What are some prototype or testing ideas that you could offer to the student or friend who's coming to you asking you this that can help them explore this career path to see if it's the right fit for them and how to get into it? So use our chat box. What are all of the wonderful, great ideas? And remember, there are no bad ideas. There are no, you know, um, you know, judgments here. This is really intended to just have some really fun exploration and see all of the different ideas. There are no right answers, but if you come to campus in Manchester, New Hampshire, I'll buy a cup of Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Let's see what you got. You heard that, people. All right. So we got volunteer in a school, a camp, tutoring setting to work with kids from diverse backgrounds. I love it. That's a great one. Yeah, Christina said I was uh, suggest starting off gaining experience with children. I agree. I mean, that way you can find out, do you really want to work with kids? Or is it maybe you want to work with teenagers or adults, you know? So if you think you want to work with kids, find some capacity where you can gain some experience doing that. You got volunteer CASA programs through the courts. Absolutely. Women's shelter, yeah. At your church or community center. Absolutely. Try to reach out to someone who is in that field. Yes. Have that prototype conversation. See what that day-to-day -day looks like. Babysitting, volunteering at a daycare, absolutely. Working at a daycare too, that's a great experience working with kids and a lot of problem solving and helping. Take more of a look back at the job and try to first, um, like being on a bus. Yeah, being a bus. Summer camps, yeah. yeah. Excellent ideas. Again, all of us is smarter than any one of us. And just again, you just all applied little parts of design thinking right there. So mm -hmm. uh, you have the slides, you have the recording, and we'll have the recording. So this stuff really does work. Uh, again, Jess and I have been using it for many years now, and it really does help students see what's possible. So whether you're just starting out and you're a younger person or you're looking to advance in your career or change, these principles do work. They're flexible, they're adaptable, uh, and they really do help. So um, we hope that was useful. Um, and now any questions? Turn over to Jillian. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. That was awesome. I've heard the presentation a couple of times now and I feel like I latch onto something new every time. So that was great. We really appreciate it. Um, just a couple of questions that were in the chat box. Um, let's see. All right, the first question um, from Kelly. If I am a creative writing slash nonfiction major, will design thinking apply and be useful to me? Absolutely. I think, uh, Telly, depending on what you want to do, uh, you can use the principles to kind of determine your path and your next steps so you can get more experience and figure out how do you want to apply your degree. Uh, so again, the principles are there for you to apply. I saw somebody in the chat found the copy of the book for free in the Shapiro Library online. Uh, so you can go check that out and kind of get started. Uh, also reach out to one of your career advisors, but it doesn't matter what your major or career goal is, the principles are adaptable. They, they're, mm -hmm. for, they're not for a particular type of major, they're for any major to help you figure out what's next. Absolutely. And I threw in the chat box the resources that can um, help you continue navigating, exploring, um, especially some of the activities that are included in the book. They're free worksheets that you can access on the website. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, our next question was from Samantha. 
She wants to know, how do I get in touch with people in my field if there are no local options? Mm. Yeah, I will say you don't have to have local options. I mean, there are people who are working in a career, um, unless it's something very specific about your area that you're trying to learn about. But if you can find an alum who's in, uh, across the country doing the job that you want to do, oftentimes there's going to be a lot of similar information. So LinkedIn is a great tool. Um, you know, and if you're struggling, you can reach out to your career advisor as we have access to our amazing alumni office who can also tap into our, our alumni who have reached out and expressed interest in meeting with students. But um, I often have a lot of success on LinkedIn, um, you know, but if you can't find anyone in your area, like I said, I, I would, you know, explore outside your area and it's okay to reach out to uh, alumni across the country or even in other countries. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, looks like another question just came in from Christy. Um, her situation is that she works in retail. She noticed um, that most advanced leadership career within the company itself without even having a degree. She's reconsidering where she wants to work moving forward. Um, she's worked nine years with this current company, but really enjoys working with people. Are there any questions to ask herself or them about advancing? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to go back and forth, Jason. <laughs> yeah, and I think depending on, again, what advancement looks like to you. Uh, I remember Jess had mentioned like finding people in your company who are maybe in that role, having an initial conversation, um, you know, putting yourself out there and kind of stepping up and volunteering. One of the former recruiters I worked with said that's one of the greatest things he ever did in his career. Like when any everyone asked, hey, we need a help with this or does anyone want to volunteer to do this? He always raised his hand and he got all these new opportunities and gained all these new skills and experiences because he always kind of put himself out there. So I think starting with the people you know around you that you trust and have good professional relationships with, ask them for some insight. Uh, and then you can go much broader uh, outside the company and using SNHU alumni who may be in different roles. And again, LinkedIn is a great place to start with that. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, you know, I, understanding your strengths and, you know, what's important to you and where you want to go and, and the next step. If you want to stay in the retail and move up in a leadership role, you know, finding out what that looks like at your own company. But if you're looking to move out, you know, it's like Jason said, finding people who are in those positions, having a conversation with them. Um, yeah. And if we didn't answer your question, please let us know. I just want to make sure we're understanding that correctly. Fantastic. And I am seeing a couple questions about how to get connected with a career advisor. Um, Colleen has posted some great resources in the chat as far as our email or phone number, a um, couple links for how to get a hold of us. Um, so it looks like that was, those were all of the student questions. Um, so I just want to say thank you again so much, Jessica and Jason. Um, please click the career day link in the chat to explore the rest of the sessions being offered today. And don't forget to fill out the survey that we will email to you after the event to let us know how we did. As a reminder, these sessions are recorded and will be available on the SNHU Career Services YouTube channel in two to three business days. If you asked a question and we were unable to respond, or if you have additional questions, please reach out to SNHU Career Services. Again, all of the contact information is in the chat. And lastly, please check out Handshake to find more SNHU career events in the future. We will include the link to Handshake in the chat as well. Um, Jessica, Jason, Colleen, again, thank you guys all so much. Really appreciate it. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing all of you in the next sessions coming up. So have a great rest of your day and thanks again. Thank you. Bye. Happy was... designing. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Great day. Are we still being recorded? I don't want to say anything. <laughs>